Welcome back. Tom Harmon here with you. Dr. John Gray on the line with us, a relationship expert, author of the book Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. His website, MarsVenus.com and uh, Crucial.com. Just did a a fascinating new survey about what men find attractive in women. John Gray, welcome back to the program, by the way. I'm happy to be on the program on Valentine's Day, hoping everybody has a great Valentine's Day. Indeed. And, and thank you for that reminder, because I should have, I should have uh, said Happy Valentine's Day to Senator Sanders, to my listeners, and this is the first mention of it today. Um, so on Valentine's Day, what is it that uh, particularly single men need to know? Well, uh, a review of what we're about to say, it's my five tips for Valentine's Day. The most important... Mm-hmm. It's a little late now, but the most important is plan ahead. And to whatever extent you can convey that you've planned something tonight before tonight comes and you say, what do you want to do tonight? (laughs) Anybody listening now can start planning. Women really appreciate special occasions. Women appreciate some planning ahead. Women appreciate little tokens of love. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a flower. It doesn't have to be a dozen roses. A flower. A is, it, is it not true uh, that men appreciate those things, too? Well, generally speaking, uh, men don't care that much about Valentine's Day getting pregnant. Now, I don't care that much about Valentine's Day, but if right. Louise goes out of her weight, my wife, uh, you know, to, to do something, even something very small for me, I, I appreciate like, it. Like what? Uh, you know, um, I, it could be well, usually it would be saying something or, or saying, hey, let's go out tonight. I mean, there have been times when... Yeah, no, no, that, that, that would be perfectly wonderful. Men, lo- men need love, to, too. It's often, yeah. my expertise is there's a, there's a shift of focus. And uh-huh. typically what women say to men, if a woman is like, wow, what a great idea. Oh, wow, hadn't thought of that. Or let's do this fun thing together. Men really love that. Yeah. And, but the fact that a woman plans ahead something to surprise you is nice, but it's not like men come to counseling saying he never does anything for me. Uh, it's, there's a subtlety here, which is yeah. there's a hormone in women's bodies called oxytocin. Men have it, but we don't run out of it. Women run out of it very quickly, and it regulates stress levels in women. And it's oxytocin. And to understand this is, like, amazing, because if you give a woman a little hug, you get a big dose of oxytocin. If you give her 24 roses, she gets a surge of oxytocin. But you can give her one rose, and it's a surge of oxytocin. Right. This is the hormone that, the, uh, that a woman's body produces at the time of childbirth that causes the bonding uh, instinct. That's clear. It also causes... Uh, it, it also is... is shown to regulate her stress, meaning that when oxytocin levels are at a healthy level, she's happy, she feels loving, right. and when they go down, she feels more stressed. Doesn't oxytocin also go up in both men and women as a consequence of orgasm? Yes. Yeah. It's the release. Uh, you have to have a certain amount of oxytocin in order to climax, and men typically have no problem climaxing. There is a small percent of men that do have that issue, and mm-hmm. they don't have enough oxytocin. But mm-hmm. most, most men do have plenty of it. <laughs> yeah. and, but women can easily run out of it. Stress depletes women of it. And, you know, that's what the crucial, you know, dot-com study, you know, it's a playful study, but it's interesting. What they found is that a high percent of women preferred men who were tech-savvy. And this is kind of a shift as opposed to guys who, who are athletes and go out to the gym if they had a choice. They like the guy who's tech-savvy. And people say, well, Why? It's because the number one stress for women today is they feel like there's not enough time. And if, if, if a computer's running slow, then they're just more frustrated. And, you know, because Crucial asked me to do this, you know, they, they provide men- memories for computers. So I actually put a new memory in my computer. My wife watched it. I'm like the hero of the universe now because mm. it's so much faster. <laughs> It was so inexpensive and so easy to do. So we've gone from uh, going out of the cave and clubbing the you know dinner to uh, to working out in the gym and demonstrating physical prowess that would be associated with the ability to bring dinner to now having and the intellectual capacity to make dinner. Or... In a sense, give her the time she needs. I mean, this is it's amazing. How, how do you how do you respond to somebody who says that's a pretty sexist? group of stereotypes. Well, I'm dealing with that since I wrote Men Are From Mars since 1992, and I say, you know, you can be intellectual about that, but the reality is is these are very common experiences that people have. Eighty percent of the time, they tend to ring true. Ten percent are 
are, are not heterosexual, generally speaking, and 10% of women tend to have much higher testosterone levels, and they relate a lot to the male experience. And there's 10% of men that tend to have low testosterone levels, and they tend to relate more to estrogen-dominant activities. So you know, you're saying biology is destiny at a certain level here? At a certain level, yeah. I mean, uh, you can adjust biology. For example, if a man is out of work and, and starts feeling depressed because, you know, I'm not making a living, how am I going to get by, his testosterone levels will dramatically drop. His estrogen level, the female hormone, will dramatically increase. But the problem is he will be moody, he will be irritable, he'll be easily angered, or he'll be passive. So when men start having dominant female hormones, they are actually much more stressed. Well, I've seen the studies that indicate that men in, work, men in workplace positions where they feel that they are being crushed, whether it's by a man or a woman, uh, you know, where there, there's significant power dynamics, where they're the, the underdog, you say, right. uh, that their testosterone, testosterone levels drop. drop. Yeah. And on the other hand, when men, for example, uh, the one study I saw was done around elections. When men win elections, their testosterone levels spike. Yeah. It's, testosterone is linked to feeling successful that you make a difference. And testosterone in men is the number one regulator of stress. Hmm. So the idea, the win-win on Valentine's Day is for a man to know a few simple things that you do, for example, and then a woman delights in that, so he ends up feeling successful that he accomplished something for her. She appreciates it, delights in it, and she ends up bonding more with him because he's done something for her. So if I do something for you, my testosterone goes up. If you do something for me, my oxytocin goes up. So oxytocin is more like what you receive and testosterone is more like what you're successful at. Fascinating. Fascinating. Dr. John Gray, relationship expert, author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, his website, marsvenus.com, and uh, the survey link is posted over tomhartman.com, and crucial.com did the study that Dr. Gray is speaking of. Dr. Gray, thanks so much for being with us again. Tom, thank you so much. I listen to your show all the time. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Hang on just a second. Call 866-987-THON. Sorry about that guy who steps on us all the time. (laughs) Thank you for your kind (laughs) words, John Gray. (laughs) And and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.